In the grand scheme of things, 60 years may seem insignificant. For Le Moyne College, it represents everything. In that time, a farmer's field on a hill has been transformed into an impressive campus composed of more than 30 buildings. A grand vision has become a respected institution with 22,000 alumni scattered about the globe. And a college has strengthened and made its own contributions to a 450-year-old educational tradition. The story begins in 1937 when Bishop Walter Forey announced his intention to establish a new Catholic college within his diocese. At the same time, the New York province of the Society of Jesus began exploring opening an institution within its geographic borders, considering sites in Elmira, Auburn, Rochester, and Saranac Lake. In 1941, Bishop Forey formally invited the Society of Jesus to locate the country's 27th Jesuit College in Syracuse. But the Second World War put plans on hold, though ultimately the conflict served as a major catalyst. Following the war, millions of men and women involved in both combat and non-combat roles were ready to embark on new careers. Coupled with the GI Bill of Rights, the influx of those interested in pursuing college studies created a dire need for new institutions. Events moved quickly. In October 1945, the name Le Moyne was decided upon to honor Simon Le Moyne, the Jesuit missionary and diplomat who three centuries earlier discovered salt springs in the area. In February 1946, New York State granted a charter for the new college, which held its first classes at a downtown Syracuse storefront, and later in the stately Hiscock Mansion on James Street. That summer, excavation work began at the former Gifford Farm, a 116-acre plot of land purchased for $62,000. Financing for the land and other startup costs came from a remarkable fundraising campaign, which in two weeks raised in excess of $1.5 million, the equivalent of more than $15 million today. In June 1948, a motorcade traveled from the Hiscock Mansion to the Heights. Once there, hundreds of students processed to the newly built administration and science buildings symbolizing the move up to the new campus. Word of the new college, the first Jesuit school to open as a co-educational institution, spread quickly with much optimism and enthusiasm marking the early years. In 1951, the first class of 259 seniors graduated. Four years later, Nelligan opened as the first residence hall. Students adhered to a firm dress code, with seniors and professors required to wear black academic robes. No longer strictly a commuter college, the campus became more vibrant. The Drama Guild, Boot and Buskin debuted. The Lemoyne Glee Club appeared on the Ed Sullivan Show to benefit the college's building fund. With basketball as its cornerstone, Lemoyne's fledgling athletic program prospered. Despite limited funds, the academic side grew stronger. More and more respected faculty were recruited, and natural sciences joined industrial relations as hallmarks of study, complemented by a rigorous core curriculum in theology, philosophy, history, and classical languages. Spiritually, the Jesuit presence was bolstered by the opening of the Loyola Hall residence in 1957. Priests lived on each floor of Nelligan, and though the number of lay professors was growing, nearly half of all faculty were still Jesuits. By the early 1960s, growing enrollment stretched physical space limitations. In short order, construction began on a dining hall and two residence halls, Dablon and the first on-campus housing for women, St. Mary's. The Anthony A. Henninger Athletic Center was built, 
creating an on-campus venue to hold indoor sporting events. The 1960s witnessed a time of change, activism, and turmoil around the world, and Le Moyne mirrored society. The International House, founded in 1962, institutionalized the college's commitment to social justice. Many from Le Moyne joined the Civil Rights March on Washington in 1963, and later a series of Vietnam War protests took place on campus. Vatican Council II had an enormous impact on the Catholic Church and, by extension, Le Moyne, as liturgy and curriculum changed to reflect the Church's new decrees. By the 1970s, student life for Le Moyne's 1800 undergrads was far different than that of their predecessors. The dress code had long since been relaxed. The Rathskeller opened in basement foray. Dolphy Day, a spontaneous celebration of spring, became an annual tradition. The Noreen Real Falcone Library would soon be built, allowing the former space to be transformed into the Dolphin Den. In the mid-1970s, women's sports, spurred on by Title IX, took off. Basketball, soccer, and later softball all achieved significant success. Men's teams also excelled, in particular, baseball, which took the campus on an emotional roller coaster ride when it came within one run of making it to the 1989 College World Series. Campus growth continued. A rec center was added, featuring multi-use courts and the Vincent B. Ryan S.J. Pool. The Panashi family chapel became the spiritual center of the campus. And in 1999, the W. Carroll Coin Center for the Performing Arts replaced the venerable firehouse, for 30 years home of the highly respected drama program. Since hitting the half-century mark in 1996, the remarkable record of growth and achievement has continued. Today, more than 2,300 undergrads from the U.S. and abroad can choose from 29 majors, master's programs in education, business administration, physician assistant studies, and nursing attract a growing number of non-traditional students. Along with the Madden Institute for Business Education, centers of special excellence like Peace and Global Studies, the Sansone Center for Catholic Studies, and soon to be launched centers on regional and urban learning and environmental change have established Le Moyne as an important place for research and debate. Building on a proud history of service, community-based learning activities have expanded into new areas of study. Programs such as the Le Moyne Scholars Institute prepare outstanding yet underserved students for college, furthering the college's rich legacy of attracting first-generation students. And in 2004, men's lacrosse brought home the Dolphins' first national championship, a feat repeated earlier this year. Today, Le Moyne continues to exemplify and build on the ideal set forth 60 years ago by Bishop Forey, the founding Jesuits, and their lay colleagues. Through its compelling mission, notable alumni, inspirational faculty, and high-performing students, the college enjoys a national reputation for academic excellence. Le Moyne's past is inspirational, its present is impressive and its future will be extraordinary as together we work toward achieving 